and we'll probably kick off about about two minutes past the hour, just give people a chance to, to come on. Hello, everybody, uh, and thank you for joining us. My name is Andy Elwood. I um, head up product marketing here at Pulseway. Uh, we're just coming to the top of the hour, so we'll, we'll wait another couple of minutes. People are still joining us. So we will start off in about uh, two minutes' time.
Well, it's okay. I um, think we'll uh, we'll make a start now. Um, as I said, for the people uh, people who just joined us, my name is Andy Elwood, uh, Elwood, and I head up product marketing here at Pulseway. Uh, and it uh, I, I gives me great pleasure to introduce this webinar today uh, uh, about spanning. And I'm joined by uh, Dave Wallen, the director of product marketing at Spanning, and Matt McDermott, the director of product management at Spanning. Um, and uh, there is, if you, there's plenty of time to ask questions. If you have any questions, use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. I'll be keeping an eye on those. Uh, and unless there's something particularly pertinent to, to what they're, they're saying, uh, we'll kind of try and save the questions till the end. Um, but uh, so otherwise, uh, oh, this is being recorded. Uh, it's on YouTube and in Zoom. Um, so if you have colleagues who can't attend, you can get a recording as well. So with that, I will hand over to Dave. Thanks very much, Dave. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for having us. And uh, thanks to everybody for joining us today. So what we really you know, want to cover, kick things off, is that customers and, and not Microsoft are responsible for Office 365 data protection, uh, logistically, operationally, and contractually. You know, there, there are a few places in the world more secure than Microsoft data centers, and they are designed with disaster recovery capabilities to protect your data from any conceivable infrastructure threat. But Microsoft cannot protect you from the most common causes of data loss, phishing, ransomware, malware attacks, human error, malicious behavior, and sacred configuration errors. And that's because uh, there's, because that was a statement that Matt and I say all the time, Human error is an unpatchable weakness in any data protection plan. And it really is human activity from both internal and external actors that is the, the primary threat to Office 365 data. Now here's a, this is a static image of our Office 365 house uh, that we use to illustrate the many threats that, that people pose to your Office 365 tenant. There's actually an interactive version of this on our standing website that visitors can explore where you can kick off animations when you click on the images that represent the threats. Uh, and we're gonna go back to this, but we're gonna start with a discussion of the shared responsibility model. And that dictates what Microsoft is responsible for when it comes to data protection and what you're responsible for. Uh, we'll also look at the risk of Office 365 data loss and, and how it's continued to grow as Office 365 usage has changed over the past year. Uh, and then we'll return to the house for a detailed look at these threats. And we'll show you how Spanning Solutions can help you to protect your house. And as Andy said, you know, we'll, we'll probably hit a bunch of questions at the end, but you know, continue to add those to the chat box. So let's get started with the shared responsibility model. You know, because it's such a vital platform, we often think of Office 365 as something more than SaaS, but technically and legally, that's exactly what it is. And joint management of SaaS is referred to as the shared responsibility model. That's where the customer is considered the controller of their data, and the vendor acts as the processor of that data. Right, in terms processor and controller have been codified in regulations like GDPR. You know, part of that means that Microsoft is totally responsible for application availability. And as we said, uh, their data centers, their advanced disaster recovery capabilities are gonna protect you from just about any infrastructure threat. But as processor, it's their responsibility to add, delete, or modify data upon request. And by request, we don't mean opening up a, a trouble ticket with Microsoft to have data deleted. We mean that every time a user hits the delete key on their keyboard, right clicks on their mouse and hits delete. If that request, that action is authenticated by valid credentials, it'll be considered legitimate and it'll be honored. The right side of the slide lists the most common causes of illegitimate data, data requests. Uh, you know, whether that's accidental, or malicious, the responsibility in all cases is on the customer as the controller, right? And the key here is to understand the difference between data replication for high availability, which Microsoft does, and backup for data restore and business continuity, which is your responsibility. Matt, you can expand on this a little bit. Sure, Dave. 
when we talk about high availability, Microsoft is second to none in their ability to maintain their services. For example, when you are connected to Exchange Online, you might be connected to any one of four different servers during the day. In fact, your phone and your desktop may actually be connected to different servers at any given time. And that's because Microsoft is maintaining resilient copies of your data in multiple locations so that they can maintain a highly available network. The problem is when you have a data deletion event, when something bad happens to your mail, for example, Microsoft, the defaults are 14 days in your recycle bin. Now, as an administrator, I can kick that up to 30 days, but it takes a trouble ticket to get the data back beyond those timeframes. For example, in SharePoint Online, the recycle bin lasts for 93 days, but once the data is gone, either through an administrator purging the recycle bin or that 93 days running out, you have only 10 days to respond to and get a trouble ticket into Microsoft. During that time, of course, your end users are still adding content to those SharePoint sites. When Microsoft restores the site collection, they restore the entire site collection, not just the file that you're missing. Consequently, all the data that was produced and created and added to that site in the intervening time is gonna be overwritten. What spanning backup does is it has granular restore options. You can pick and choose the exact date and you can pick and choose the exact file or files that you wanna restore and restore them in just a few clicks of a mouse. Dave? Dave? Yes, there's something weird with Zoom not reading my mic. Can you hear me now? Ah, I can hear you now. Yes, I can. Very strange. Now, I was going to say you sound a little more echoey than usual today, but uh, but nope, it sounds like you're back on. All right. So, and here's the proof. This is uh, from Microsoft's service level agreement. And it says, if anyone or anything with a valid credential or access takes an accent that the account that, 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 the, that account has permissions to take and that the password is valid, it's entirely on you. And that's you know, accidental, malicious, legitimate, fraudulent. It does not matter. Microsoft is not responsible. You are responsible for maintaining the integrity of your, your passwords, your credentials, and as well as for the actions of your users. So let's take a look at how you know, the risks have, have really gotten even worse over the past year. Trends that we saw in terms of additional usage and uh, and, and, and changes in the way that people were, were using Office 365 was certainly accelerated by everything that happened last year. Just in terms of, of basic usage, you know, quarter after quarter, Microsoft reported better than 25% growth for the past 12 months. It'd be interesting to see what happens this quarter. And you know, we thought there would be just a huge increase in, in Q2 and Q3 of last year, yet that growth has continued. So you know, what, what, what that means for the future will be interesting. And, even more interesting, just this week, Microsoft released their first ever work trend index, and they gave us some really interesting data that demonstrated how usage has grown and changed in the past 12 months. So when we compare Office 365 usage between February 2020 and February 2021, we see not only a large increase, but also in, in terms of users, but in terms of usage, right? So time spent in Microsoft Teams has more than doubled globally. And aside from a little dip in December, uh, that continues to climb. The average meeting is 10 minutes longer, increasing from 35 to 45 minutes. The average team user is sending 45% more chats per week and 42% more chats per person after hours, with chats per week still on the rise. The number of emails delivered to non-consumer customers in February compared to the same month last year is up by 40.6 billion. But we all know that the 0.6 is the actual work emails and that 40 is probably spam, right? Yeah. That's, Trying that's to a, sell, sell me masks <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> but here's what, I mean, the biggest thing is we've seen a 66% increase in the number of people working on documents. And 
you know, when I was thinking through this with, with some of my colleagues, one of the things we thought about was, you know, Microsoft Office as a product shipped in, in 1989. So for there to be a one year growth in the usage of 66% of a product that old, that's just mind blowing, right? That's amazing. And let's, let's take into account, right? The number one cause of data loss, and we'll actually, we'll, we'll talk more about this later, is user error. It accounts for over 60% of, of data loss. So logically, uh, the increased use in Office 65 should minimally result in a corresponding increased data loss per user because just of that amount of usage. But we look at the times and the things that are happening, that added complexity of working outside the office and dealing with personal distractions and stressors, that increases the risk of human error. Uh, you know, the Microsoft report actually states this barrage of communications is unstructured and mostly unplanned, with 62% of calls and meetings unscheduled or conducted ad hoc, and workers are feeling the pressure to keep up despite meeting and chat overload. 50% of people respond to team chats within five minutes or less. And that's a response that has not changed year over year. And this proves the intensity of our workday and what is expected of employees during this time has, has increased significantly. Uh, so, and, and we're expecting, and Microsoft, the report also is kind of expects as people then go to a hybrid environment, there's going to be, hey, even though I don't have that distraction in the office, I'm constantly in two different places. I'm plugging, I'm unplugging, I'm connecting in different ways and acting in different ways that, that we might see even more in terms of user error, in terms of distraction and mistakes. And that's really what we're thinking about when we think about backup and recovery. And, you know, just in terms of, of some objective statistics, we looked at help desk volume increases pre-COVID to post-COVID. And you know the reports vary, but you know from thirty percent to seventy percent. So people are making mistakes, people are needing more help, uh, people are, are 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 having more issues. So user error definitely goes up. Then there's you know, and the bad guys know that. So you know, I'm going to show you some numbers that may seem incredible because they they did to me when I first saw them. And this is data from the 2020 McAfee Cloud Adoption and Risk Report. Uh, what's unique about the McAfee report is not based on survey results. Their findings based on analysis of, of, their, of the cloud usage data for their own customers, 30 million of their own customers. So for one thing, right, that's a much larger sample than the largest survey by, by uh, multiple more orders of magnitude. Uh, but more important, when, when you compare it to uh, reports based on surveys, there's a low reliability of self-reporting. Like people will complete surveys based on what they think will make them look favorable to the researcher. And that factor is only slightly impacted when surveys are conducted online. People just will, will fill out things in a way that may, to try to make themselves look better. Uh, but more importantly, I think in this case is the vast majority of, of cybercrime goes unnoticed. Uh, so with that in mind, let's, let's take a look at some of this, this data. On average, organizations experience 12.2 incidents each month in which an unauthorized third party exploits stolen account credentials to gain access to corporate data stored in a cloud service. Uh, these incidents affect 80.3% of organizations at least once a month. And additionally, 92% of companies have cloud credentials for sale on the dark web. And as high as these numbers seem, this is the from the 19, from the, from the, from the 20, 20 report, it's based on 2019 data. So one can only imagine what these numbers are gonna be when McAfee uh, provides their, their 2021 report with 2020 data. Because we know things have gotten worse. Uh, phishing attacks have exploded. Uh, you know, we, we looked at a lot of the research and we put up checkpoints report of a 400% increase because it's one of the lower numbers that we saw and the others were just fantastically high and they may be correct, but I was almost embarrassed. To, you know, I would be embarrassed to put up a number that's at 1200%. Uh, so, the, you know, in terms of threats to Office 365, 
Phishing, leveraging brand impersonation really has been the biggest issue of 2020. Uh, you know, in brand impersonation, a hacker will use a, a branded email and landing page from a reputable company to fool users into giving up their credentials, or maybe in the case of con consent phishing, uh, application access to their account, therefore to your domain, right? So communications that look like it's coming from Microsoft so, to, so people can try to get into your tenant. Now, prior to COVID, the, the brands that topped the list of most impersonated were uh, consumer financial institutions, uh, consumer uh, consumer uh, telecom companies, you know, things that people would normally have to plug in uh, credentials for that, that, that people would, you know, very obviously give, and they would try to get their, their personal information and scammers would try to make some money off of that. Uh, but as threat actors sought to capitalize on employees working remotely, Microsoft moved to the top of the list. First, at the end of Q2, they were at 19%. By the end of the year, they Microsoft branded phishing emails accounted for more than half of all the attacks of this sort. So Office 365 has a monstrous target on its back. People want to get into your tenants. People want to get... To your to your to your data that way, and let's you know kind of look at now. We're going to go to the house and we're going to look at, at those ways that the bad guys can mess with your data. But you know, again, sixty per, more than sixty percent is is user error and is 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 erroneous, but it's going to be equally devastating. So this is a this again this is our interactive house, and we kind of divided these threats into into what we say are the front door threats. You know, the bad guys trying to get in. We have what's going inside the house, and that's just the people that, that work there or, you know, whether they're doing the right thing, the wrong thing, or otherwise. And then there's the backdoor threats that you might not think about and is a little more hidden and sneaky. So, firstly, the threats we think about the most are the ones waiting at the front door. Right, Matt? That's right, Dave. When we look, these are the most public ones. Um, these are the ones that hit the media most often because they are truly attacks. These are hackers that are potentially using their own skills, but more often than not, they're using kits that they can download off of the dark web to be able to send phishing emails, send targeted spear phishing emails to specific people whose credentials, whether it's just their email address or it's their full username and password, and try to access your accounts, whether they're in Office 365 or social media accounts in other places. Of course, mal malware and viruses, an attempt to send you a, um, a payload embedded in an email that might be your boss got compromised and they send it to you from your boss with, an, with a message to open that email so that they can take over your account. And then of course, ransomware is in the news all the time. Huge companies and small companies are getting hit by ransomware and crypto attacks that are encrypting all of the data on their, on their laptops, on their servers, and holding those companies ransom. Garmin last year was hit with a massive worldwide ransomware attack that took that company offline, including their factories, for more than a week. Can you imagine the cost of clicking on that email when it was able to manage that kind of damage? Dave? But just like in the movies, Matt, the big it's threat. inside the house. <laughs> That's right. It's inside the house. I, I urge our I urge our uh, our listeners to go to spanning.com and check out the uh, the actual live version of our interactive house. It's quite a bit of fun. Uh, my favorite is on this slide, of course, and it is the uh, it's the cat that's sitting up there <laughs> on the on the dresser. Um, the, the cat represents the malicious insider. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, and of course, fittingly, it is a Siamese cat. So, uh, so there you go, Dave. <laughs> well, yeah, we I mean you want to go through some of these. We got human error, mm -hmm. right? So people, we absolutely, about and and these are not these are not. These are people that are just plain busy. And so we see a lot of different human error from people who are brand new to Office 365. Not only are they learning how to use the tools, how to share, how to 
um, work in teams, how to find the files that they just uploaded and lost completely because they just don't know where they were when they uploaded it, and add to that the complexities of having children who are being homeschooled and just the chaotic environment that that can lead to, a moment's inattention. For instance, clicking on a sharing message and then not realizing that you're not logging into Microsoft um, Office 365, but you're logging into a nefarious site that's collecting your credentials. Any of those kinds of things can lead to a disastrous situation just through simple human error. What if, what if that human is you know, for the elements, but what if that human is a is an administrator? Well, that's even worse, of course. And we saw this in the solar winds attack. In the solar winds hack, the uh, the the in, the uh, malicious actors were able to gain access to critical administrative accounts. And from there, they could create their own accounts. And so they didn't even have to use those accounts anymore. They could simply propagate new accounts that they were able to use and stay resident inside of that network for months before they decided to detonate the payload of and, and shut the company down. So it's, it's really an amazing thing that that they're able to get in, they're able to get go by undetected and carry out very sophisticated, sneaky attacks. The solar winds attack, they were able to stay in and um, um, I said detonate the payload. What I really meant was uh, create their own custom payloads to be delivered through the SolarWinds update process. So that's, that's incredibly sophisticated. But just for um, Office 365, they might get access through an illegitimate um, email and then be able to take over an accounting process or issue uh, checks and invoices or something like that. The Ill illegitimate deletion requests, those are if, you're, if you lose track of your phone, for example, and somebody is able to access your phone and create deletions, those requests will be honored by Microsoft because they're properly validated. Malicious insiders are something we worry about all the time. These are people who have trust but are there are, are angry at the company, whether they feel like they've been wronged or they feel like there's some sort of social justice that they need to expose the company by taking content from inside the company and exposing it. These are these are threat actors you need to worry about. So having people with too much access can be a problem and programmatic errors scripts that are downloaded off the internet where an admin doesn't necessarily know what all of the details of the script are. He just wants to solve the problem that the script claims to solve and in doing so causes massive deletions. Dave? And then there's the backdoor, right? Like a backup solution. Uh, backup solutions like Spanny Connect Office 365 through that backdoor right? Picking the wrong one or picking an add-on application of actually any time can result in additional vulnerabilities if you choose the wrong one, right, Matt? That's right, Dave. The thing about the way spanning connects through off to Office 365 is we use something, we use a protocol that's um, OAuth 2.0. And in doing so, we exchange a secure token with the, um, with the tenant to ensure that we only have access to the scopes of responsibility that we request at the time that the app is installed. If you have poor controls over the applications that are accessing your environment, then you may be you may be subject to what's called consent phishing, which means this simple application that's supposed to plug into um, plug into PowerPoint, for example, may request significantly more access than is required to accomplish its job. In doing so, it has more access to your tenant than it really should have. And so paying attention to those scopes, paying attention to the apps that you have installed in your Azure tenant are critical to making sure that you have control over how data is accessed, who has access to that data, and where your data is moving. Intercepted traffic would be a sophisticated attack where um, you're working at a coffee shop, maybe you're working over, over an unprotected network instead of using VPN to uh, encrypt your traffic. And in doing so, anybody who has access to the network equipment in that coffee shop could also have potentially access to your data. 
I mentioned OAuth 2.0 because the last item on this slide is of significant importance. Some applications today still use old privileged service account approaches to creating and managing your data for you. The problem with this is that those privileged service accounts have way too much access to your to your tenant. And in fact, it becomes very complicated to figure out what they're doing. We know of some service some service providers where their service account spins up new service accounts inside your tenant without even asking you about that. And that's we we figure that that is just not acceptable from a from a professional perspective. Dave all right, so let's you know talk about some ways that spanning can help with these. You know, before we we're, we're focusing here on on Office 365, we also have solutions for G Suite and Salesforce. If if those are our applications in your organization as well, but you know, Office 365 is really focused on uh, our, our our backup and restore for for that platform and addressing a lot of the issues we saw before. So differentiators. One thing that's unique about spanning is we provide end user self service. So uh, end users can restore and back up their basic data from Exchange Online and OneDrive. Uh, it's, it's Matt will show you in the demo coming up. Super easy to use, but we provide enterprise class security, compliance, and scalability. You know, we put all these things together, that end user self-service, that ease of use and that enterprise scalability, we have the lowest TCO in our class and spanning is proven and trusted. We, we are a G2 crowd leader. We're also meet the rigorous quality of code and service requirements for listing on Microsoft App Source. You know, Microsoft has an a online marketplace for called AppSource for, for applications that can work for Office 65 or Azure or any of their, their platform solutions. Uh, we made a decision to invest in meeting Microsoft's requirements, uh, you know, to, to, to meet, meet not only for the technical technical elements of, of our design and architecture, but we have to meet those quality requirements for support, for availability, and for uptime. You know, there was a significant investment in time and effort that had to be made for us to do that. But the fact that we have done that should gives our customers peace of mind. And if you're considering some of our competitors, competitive products, we, we recommend you go to AppSource, see if that company, that vendor is listed there before you make the decision to invest in them to make sure that, that you are backing up Officer 65 with a company that has, is credentialed by Microsoft. So I think this is the time for, uh, for Matt to actually give you a look at this. Ready, Matt? I'm ready, Dave. Okay, I'm gonna stop my share. All right, I'll go ahead and steal it. Let me get signed in here. Don't forget, right. if you have any questions, just use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we'll answer those at the end of the demo. Sorry, go ahead, Matt. Nope, excellent, thank you. So spanning backup for Office 365, as Dave said, is an Azure verified application. We install directly into Azure as an enterprise application and we use OAuth 2.0 to be able to connect to and authenticate with your Office 365 tenant. Once we're there, we back up your users' mail, calendar, contacts, and OneDrive, as well as SharePoint, and Teams, and Teams conversations. You can license your users by simply selecting the users from the list. And once they're licensed, our once daily backups will run, ensuring that you get your data backed up. Spanning back for Office 365 is very easy to use. In fact, we are one of the few vet backup vendors that actually have an end user self-service capability. In this case, I'm logged in as an administrator and I'm viewing Carol Beard's um, backups. But if Carol were to log in, she would see a trimmed user interface that just includes mail, calendar, contacts, and OneDrive for herself without the administrative controls down the left side. She can then view her backups. For instance, if I wanna choose OneDrive here, I can scroll down, I can find a couple of files. I can keep scrolling and find a couple of files. 
I could choose those files and then from the select action menu, I can choose to restore or export those files. I'll go ahead and choose to export them. And since I'm an administrator, I have the option to restore back into Carol's OneDrive, or I can restore to a different user's OneDrive in what we call a cross user restore. This cross user restore capability satisfies a lot of our customers when they have employees that have left the company and they need to restore. For instance, if Carol left the company and she had been working on a project, but never, sh never shared the documentation for the project with her, uh, with her team or on a SharePoint site, then this would be a really simple solution. Choose different user, choose next. Since I'm logged in as the farm administrator, I'll go ahead and choose that. This will create a restore job that I can track in the activity tab of SharePoint of spanning backup for Microsoft 365. Once the backup is complete, it moves to the past activity tab. And this is, gives me a chance to show you the activities, our activity log for spanning backup for Microsoft 365. This is an immutable log that can be used to determine what kind of activity is going on inside your tenant. Um, each of the restores, each of the backups, and even viewing a backup is, is logged in our activity log. Since I restored that content to my own OneDrive, I'm going to drop down here. I'll choose OneDrive. I'll find the restored on folder for the date and time of my restore, and I find the documents that I'm looking for. From here, I can move them to another location simply using uh, Office 365's built-in move functionality, move it to another destination of my OneDrive, or move it to another SharePoint site. Spanning backup for Office 365 also backs up and restores SharePoint data, which would include SharePoint traditional team sites as well as uh, team uh, as well as uh, SharePoint sites associated with Microsoft Teams and Exchange groups. You can simply drop into the team. You can open the backup just like we did with a user and then find the back find the documents that you wish to back up and then from the select action menu choose to restore those files we're also introducing our new feature for backing up teams channel conversations in this case i just have the one team channel i have the general channel but it's the same user interface that allows you to simply come in and export the content associated with that team to be able to get a full fidelity restoration or a full fidelity archive copy of the team's channel conversations. Spanning backup for Office 365 is also unique in that we have built in dark web monitoring capability. Spanning backup for Office 365 will back will protect the domains that are associated with your Office 365 tenant regardless of how many domains you have, and then display the credentials that have been discovered on the dark web on the dark web tab. If we find a password, we'll mask the password and only show the first five characters so that you can have a meaningful conversation with, with the user who's compromised about the password to make sure that they're not using that in other locations. Because statistics show that 70% of passwords are reused on the internet, which means that Carol, although she may have used this on sharethis.com, she may use that in other places as well. We also show the status of the user. In this case, the shield indicates that the user is protected by spanning backup for Microsoft 365. The X indicates that we did not find the user in Azure Active Directory. In this case, Katie Oliver has already left the company, but we have a protected backup of her. For the farm and for Dan and for Carol, they're protected by a spanning license, whereas Cheyenne is not. Now, Cheyenne may be uh, an, an ex-employee or somebody who was, who was part of a previous in, uh, instance of pinkstonfarms.com, or it might be a shared account like IT operations. Either way, we don't limit the detection to just the users in your domain. We look at all domain credentials. I mentioned before about the activity tab. This is our immutable log of all actions taken. We also have the backup history that shows all of the backups and the problems potentially related to the, um, related to the, the backups. And we have a problems log as well. You can simply go back through time to find out what the problems were. 
open them out, decide whether or not those those problems need to be need to be actioned. Finally, on our settings tab, we have a daily status notification email that we send to tell you how your backups are running. We offer flexible retention policies so that you can have retention per workload uh, in your organization so that if you are under regulations that allow that uh, cause you to have retention policies, we can mirror those retention policies with your backups. We also offer bring your own key. At the time of installation, if you're using um, your own key management service, Spanning can leverage that key management service out of, out of AWS and allow you to manage your own keys. We offer an API token capability to allow you to do scripted user license and delicense activities with our PowerShell module. And then your global administrators are automatically part of uh, spanning backup for Office 365 administrators, but you can also designate additional users as backup administrators. So spanning backup for Office 365 is a full suite of security plus backup that allows you to protect your users, SharePoint, and Microsoft Teams. Dave? All right, thanks, Matt. Let me reorganize here, put up the uh, slide back up. And I yep. think actually Andy's gonna tell the people about a special offer. <laughs> uh, yes, before we get to the, the question, there's, we have one question, um, but at the moment, if you, uh, purchase spanning before the end of the month. I know there's not much time, but uh, we, we are offering 25% off the usual price. If you talk to your uh, Pulseway account manager, uh, they can uh, help you. They're, 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 they're ready and willing to talk to you uh, about this offer. So uh, this is a great time uh, to buy uh, what is a, a great product that, um, that hopefully you can see the, the need for. Um, so we have one question, and uh, if uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, just put them in the Q&A box. This is from Gabriel, who's asked, uh, do you back up planner information? We currently don't back up planner information in Spanning Backup for Microsoft 365, no. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're, so uh, that was the only question we have. Is there, um, are there any other questions? Or give, a, give it another minute or so. Um, and the, the, you have Spanning available for Salesforce and G Suite, don't you, as well? That yes, we correct. do. Yep. Yes, we do. And and we should also point out, since um, uh, we know that Andy, that you service a lot of different regions, Spanning Backup for um, Microsoft 365 is available in an Asia Pacific data center in Australia, a U.S. data center as well as an EU data center hosted in Ireland. So we try to give folks an, uh, an opportunity to use the data center that's, uh, that serves their purpose the best. Okay, excellent, that's, that's great news. Um, and, and presumably the same kind of um, concerns and, and arguments apply to G Suite and Salesforce as they do to Office 365. G Suite, G Suite is available in the US and the EU, as is Salesforce. Okay, excellent. Um, so um, a question from uh, Philander, I use Google 365, will this work or would I have to be directly with Microsoft? I honestly don't know what Google 365 is. Yeah, no, <laughs> GoDaddy. So oh, the just... Go the GoDaddy version of yeah. uh, yes. So the GoDaddy version is is uh, still Office three sixty five, um, and so you can perform the in you can do the installation with uh, with GoDaddy. If you have any issues, just send a note to support at spanning .com and we can jump on a call and make sure that the installation goes smoothly. Okay, and we have a question for Gabriel. So, as I say, talk to your account manager uh, about uh, about the cost, um, uh, but it is a flat fee per user. Um, are there any limits on space? Uh, he wants to know. Un unlimited retention and unlimited storage. Excellent. Okay, that's that's good. So, um, so it, we'll see if there's any questions. And, and again, as I as I mentioned, we have as we mentioned, there are versions for Salesforce and G Suite. So if you are interested in those as well, uh, talk to your uh, Pulseway account manager uh, about that. Um, 
Well, I think we have no more questions uh, coming through. Um, so uh, I'd like to say thanks to Dave, thanks to Matt, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for everybody for watching. Um, you'll be sent a link to the recording uh, tomorrow, uh, but if you need to see the recording of this, it's available now on our YouTube page where it's been broadcasting live as we've been uh, talking. So thank you once and, uh, once and for all. Uh, thank you everybody uh, and appreciate your time. Okay, thanks, bye-bye.